All people come to him, come to the way of Sultan Rabia, most honored one and most glorified one. Alhamdulillah 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 الذي شرفنا بأعظم ما عنده وبأعظم مخلوقاته سيدنا ونبينا محمد عليه أفضل الصلاة والسلام وجعلنا من أمته وجعلنا من أتباعه وأتباع ساداتنا النقشبندية العلية خاصة سيد الشيخ عبد الله الفائز الدارستاني سلطان الأولياء وسيد الشيخ محمد نازم الحقاني سلطان الأولياء فيا سيدي نناجيك من مقامك نناجيك من مسجدك نناجيك من مسجدك ونناجيك من مقامك وهو مقام الأولياء مقام السلاطين سبحان الله مقام الذين أنعم الله عليهم من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين أن تنور قلوبنا وأن تفتح عيوننا وأن تبارك في آذاننا وما علينا إلا الصمت فالصامت هو ذكي والصامت دارئ الفتنة والصامت هو كما وجب على المسلمين كما قال سيدنا علي رضي الله تعالى عنه وأرضاه وكرم الله وجهه أول درجة في الإسلام الصمت Sayyidina Ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa arda said the first principle in Islam is silent. Silence. Sukut. Not to talk. Because as soon as you open your mouth to talk, you fall into problems. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so better he said to be careful with four different levels or principles if silence <clears throat> is from if talk from silver silence from gold Allah subhanallah <laughs> He distinguished between the silver and the gold by saying silver is to talk too much. Gold is to be silent. Today, even shaitan was able to penetrate, and we can say later why, can penetrate through all of us, adult and children and young ones, even three years of age. 
through all kind of electronics. It doesn't keep anyone quiet. Even the young children, you can see them, they have this machine. <laughs> yeah, we call this iPad. 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 <laughs> and they are talking to the machine. <laughs> it's not to talk to someone, at least to get a wisdom, but talking to the machine from children of three age they know how to play with computer more than me <laughs> more than you adult people and this has come under the category of no, no silent is talk they are talking even from their childhood they are talking and the adults if they are silent they cannot take it anymore they are taking they are talking to whatsapp or text message it's becoming or the games it's becoming to toxic it's becoming contaminated contaminating everyone in doing something of no sense no do ibada is better use that telephone or that computer to say subhanallah or astaghfirullah is better so sayyidna ali was looking in the future and saying make sure to be silent because there will come a time that children are not silent through these computers one time I was seeing a child playing with computer and speaking to the computer. I came and looking. He doesn't look at me. He's still busy with the, his iPad or whatever he has in his hand, working and working and working and talking. I said to his father, what is this? He said, he's playing a game. With whom he's, he's talking? He said, yeah, he's talking to the computer. Might be there are other partners from other countries playing the same game and they are connecting with each other. <laughs> so if they connect uh, um, non Islamic pictures, what happens? <laughs> Who is responsible? The father? Of course. The mother? Of course. Now the father and mother are buying the iPad for their children to tell them, go and play as much as you like, let us do our work. Allah. Sayyidina Ali was seeing in the future that talking too much is going to create fitna. So what he did, he said, keep quiet, silent. Don't, don't bother with what's going around. Keep silent. Second step, he said, you keep silent, but keep opening your ears to listen what they are saying. <coughs> if they are in a group discussion, in order to see what you have to do next. First, you are silent, don't talk, covering your mouth looking what that person is saying or that person is saying and keep quiet but observe their way to talk, their, their way of moving their mouths and their and their tongues because uh, tongues is the area of problems <laughs> because if you don't have tongue <laughs> you don't do anything wrong because you have no tongue. <clears throat> now they are using hands way to of, of, uh, hearing. But it's okay. Hearing with hands now. What do you think, Awliya Allah? They don't hear with hands? No. As soon as you put your hand in his hand, he knows 
from your ancestor from Sayyidina Adam till today what you have done. Subhanallah. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. We are not uh, simple people. Awliya Allah like Mawlana Sheikh Nazim, Sultan al Awliya. They are Salatin, they are kings, the kings. It's not easy to get that title. Nine, nine of the Naqshbandi orders has been have, have carried the title of Sultan Awliya. Nine of them in history. So it's not easy to for Maulana carrying that that power, Sultan and Awliya. And who like who he likes to give to? It's free. But he is carrying that not simple matter. It's something that is very strong. He can with a moment, one time what he was Grand Sheikh, may Allah bless his soul, mm -hmm. said that when a wali, when a murid comes to a wali, before he comes, he knows he will be informed by angels or by jinn, <coughs> because Sultan al Jinn Sayyidina al Hazaz will inform Allah. that wali, because that wali, that Sultan al Awliya, is above. Sultan al Jannah. So they improve, they inform that at that moment that person coming to you. So prepare yourself. Immediately he will look and he will look at everyone. A star represents him in the universe. Every star you see represents one of Ummah al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shining. This, there are stars which are dead, there are star, stars which are alive. Allah Ummah al Nabi, their stars are alive. Allah. Other, the others, their stars are dead. You still, still see the light coming, but originally, physic, from physics, you know that it is dead from two billion years or one billion years, whatever it takes. No. It is dead, but the light is still coming because it's moving 300,000 kilometers per second. So the wali looks and he knows from you, from that information from Sultan Jinn, he look at your star and he will find and know about you everything what you have done in your life. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Subhanallah. That's why Grand Sheikh always used to say to us in Salatul Najat, yeah. I am responsible to, in, in, uh, to present my murids to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Don't be, make me ashamed of your amal action. Because it's my duty to present you. If you make me ashamed, I be ashamed in front of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, Keep doing well. This was his uh, advice. So Awliya Allah can see as soon as they hold, he hold their hands. That you know, upload, download. No. Everything when it came up from when Sultan Al Jinn sent everything up like upload, it will go directly and saved in the hands of the Sheikh. And he doesn't show it. When he makes tasbih, slowly, slowly, he's erasing. Slowly, slowly from his murid. So Sayyidina Ali knew that secret. He's Madinatul Almi wa Ali Babu. He's the city of knowledge and Ali is the door. So Sayyidina Ali knows what's going on. So he gave to uh, gave that signal that keep quiet because don't open your mouth because the sheikh is watching they are watching us so what to say say shukran lillah subhanallah alhamdulillah allahu akbar la ilaha illallah sayyidna shah al naqshawant got his daughter married by order 
of Prophet and I will say the story as Grand Sheikh said it. <coughs> Sayyidina Shah Naqshband always covering his head, never opened his head, always covering with a hat when he sleeps or with a turban when he's awake. One night, he saw someone waking him up. Wake up. An order came for you. You wake up suddenly from sleeping. And that voice saying to him, get your daughter to marry. His daughter is young. Get her married. If by the Fajr time you don't get her married, you are out of Tariq. I'm summarizing the story. He wake up and the hat was not on his head. He didn't touch it to put it on his head because the order came first. So to that extent, they look at smallest things that we do, that they do. He said the order that came to marry my daughter to someone, not to put the hat on my head. Of course. Can we do that? No. Went to the masjid, all his murids are sleeping, except one. He approached, he saw a small lamp and approached to him. And so he saw him open, the, he has the Quran in front of him opened and he is reading. He shaked him. He didn't move. He is deeply involved in the tafsir of Surah Al Ara or tafsir of Surah Al Bakara. He saw his Ala al Din there. Wake up, open your eyes. He's diving in the surah. He's not, he's not within himself. He's not with himself. He is in, 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 in the divine presence of Prophet and in divine presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Third time, pushed him, Ya Allah ad -Din. what you are doing? He said, Ya Sayyidi, with no hat. Ya Sayyidi, what's going on? Is there something happened? He said, no, I, who else is awake? He said, everyone's sleeping except me. He said, come with me. He took two witnesses. He took him, went home, called his daughter, took her permission, and he got him married at that night. Because he was a totally div uh, diving in the tafsir of Holy Quran. Allah gave him that chance to marry the daughter of the Sheikh. So he said to him, go and this is your room. Fajr time came. Their father, the father Shah Lakshman, sitting reciting is what he is reciting. Fajr prayer came. They came from the room, praying directly. Shah Lakshman, how they pray directly? They are not Juno. They need Ghusr. They spend all the night discussing the meaning of Zuhud. Allah. 
he says something, she says something, she mm -hmm. is a woman that is very intelligent, knowledgeable from her father, learning everything, answering him on every question he says, and he answer her on every question she says. They spend their wedding night, <coughs> not ha honeymoon. <laughs> just marriage. Honey heaven. Just marriage. No discussion. No discussion. But they're discussing. <laughs> So they are discussing about Zuhur. If you want no, to marry, no, no, <laughs> no, no, it's not good. Uh, they have to come together. It's a duty. Uh, so, so this is Tariqa. Uh, Sharia is okay. You go do do what you want. <laughs> so he, we were saying about that Awliya Allah. They know the, their murids, what is going on. And that's why it is very important that to keep always as much as you can quiet. Unless if you've been asked by your sheikh to say something. Used, we used to, Maulana Sheikh used, he has a small radio at that time. Black, this big from the old, very old style. And when there is Quran, they open his family. And every day, he ask, what is the news? What is the news? He asked me, what is the news? And we say, what is the news? One day, we said we brought a newspaper and you came and he said what is the news I showed him the newspaper he said I didn't ask you for the newspaper I asked you for a news yes. I said the news is in the newspaper <laughs> he said I didn't ask I have that radio open that radio and don't go and make a hassle like Today, people, they do too much staring the news, especially cable TV, cable channels, it's spinning it. So to be, the best is to be quiet, silent. Listen, don't interfere. Don't do actions. Action will hit you. So when you silent, you are hearing ilm al you hear the knowledge, awliya Allah, then they pour. When you are quiet, they pour for you. But when you are too much talkative nonsense, instead of tasbih, they will not give you. They will hide on you. Don't say why I am not seeing the sheikh, or not, I am not seeing this, or I'm not seeing that, and other is seeing. Uh, look what you are saying and what your nafs is playing with you. Man adali waliyan. What's that mean in English? One of you. Whoever takes a, a, one wali as his enemy, Allah will declare war on him. Who is wali? Not that wali, awliya. Sultan al awliya Every Ummah of Prophet Sallallahu is a wali. Prophet make his Ummah awliya. Man adali waliyan means anyone who comes against wali means against one of mu'mins I will destroy shaitan from himself. If shaitan coming, if that, if a person coming attacking another person, it is not you are attacking, it's your shaitan inside you because you are pure. Because Allah picked you from Ummah nabi Allah makes you from that Ummah. That Ummah is mahfurun lah, is marhuma. So, Allah will declare war against your shaitan as he declared war against Iblis 
throw out throw him out of heavens because he whispered in the ear of Adam any shaitan whisper in the ear of anyone from Ummah to Nabi that shaitan will be taken away if you go higher <coughs> Allah for the, his awliya like Mawlana Sultan al awliya Sayyidi Sheikh Muhammad Nazim al Haqqani for him he will take he will declare war on shaitan not to approach that person anymore if he approach him the sheikh is responsible to do istighfar on your behalf when they are oppressor to themselves listening to shaitan they come to me to you ya muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to make istighfar and you have to make istighfar on their behalf then I will accept to erase their sin. <coughs> so this is, still we are in Ilm al Yaqeen. Hearing, hearing is through, uh, through uh, Ilm. Ilm, they read it on you, but not through vision. You cannot see. You can hear, but you cannot see. Like a TV, you hear audio, or like these telephones, but with no videos. So you don't know any, you don't see the reality. You see only uh, sound, hearing. When you, keep, when you keep hearing the good things, not accepting to hear the bad things, they take you to observe, mushahada. Witnessing, witnessing observe, and observe, observing. When you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu is I witness, I bear witness. Don't look there. It's not our business. Business here now. Maqam al Mushahada is the level of seeing. Ilmul Yaqeen, Aynul Yaqeen. Then Allah give you light to your eyes to observe and to see. Like when he ordered Sayyidina Ibrahim to slaughter his son. That's Mushahada, Kashif. You will be given that Kashif because of who? Of Mawlana, may Allah bless his soul. Amen. Amen. When you get Bukashafa, then you have Ilmul Yaqeen, Ainul Yaqeen. Then you are now seeing. Then now you can act. Now, now you can change hearts. Now you can interfere in the murid's thinking. You can go through his ears. They will give you that power. Hakikat al jazba, hakikat al fight, hakikat al tawajjah, hakikat al tawassal, hakikat al tay, hakikat al irshad. Six powers you will be given from within you to be able to move in space. You will be able to give irshad, you will be able to witness everything, to uh, have that jazba toward you. All this because you are silent, you are mustami' hearer, and now you reach the level of kashif, observation, then what you do, uh, the fourth thing, al harak Then you move your stone forward, whatever you want. Like, for example, uh, not like that, but it, in, when they play chess, what they do? Russian famous uh, player of chess, to move one stone takes days. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. To move one stone to take days. How many stones we have to move in order to be able to see visions and knowledge? But you are not moving the stone, they are moving for you the stone when you reach that level. Those awliya that brought everyone from different parts of the world to come and remember his action, his da'wah, you think uh, when he is doing da'wah, is uh, for him it's finished he went east and west to dawa 
But the da'wah that he does, it is not like the da'wah we do. The da'wah that he does, he will present you clean in front of Prophet when someone accepts him. It's his duty. He, if, he, if he doesn't do that, he's responsible. And his strength now in his death is more than his life. Brought everyone from different parts of the world. That is a sign enough for us to know that he is Sultan al -Awliya. For us, everyone of Maulana's Munid believe that he is Sultan al -Awliya. We don't care for other tariqas. They, they have their own titles and their own ways. But our way is we accept and we believe and we confess that he is Sultan al Awliya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise him higher and higher and dress us from his dress that it is Sultan al Awliya to dress us from that. Because what, what is the meaning of Sultan al Awliya when people they say Sultan al Awliya? It was mentioned first by Mahdin ibn Arabi. Sultan al Awliya title was mentioned first by Mahdin ibn Arabi. When he said in his books that he is the Sultan al Awliya means he described it like that there are two bricks to finish the wall building a wall you need last two bricks means when you build the knowledge of tariqa and the knowledge of islam you build the wall but there is hole in that wall it needs two bricks facing each other the hole there and the hole this side north or south or left or right or left so prophet said as Muhyiddin ibn Arabi said he is the the brick not the brick as brick but the meaning is the brick of gold he is the last one of prophets and in front of him the silver brick is Muhyiddin ibn Arab he said it is me that break that from prophet to me from me to my murids so that is the meaning of Sultan al awliya so he is the brick that facing the brick of prophet means wherever he is sitting he is sitting by prophet by side of prophet facing him may allah dress us from that bricks these two bricks bricks of awliya bricks of ambiya to dress us from their nur may allah forgive us and may allah accept your ziyara here and your visit here and your uh, happiness to show to Maulana that you are one hand Amen. united, Amen. one people, one head, one person Amen. that going forward. Amen. May Allah forgive everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>